So personally, I'm making about a million dollars a year in profit. How much do you or are you able to earn as a YouTuber? A stem cell researcher turned marketeer. Here for $500 a month. Oh. You probably you probably could. Cash cow Casper. I'm a mindset mentor. Oh wow, quite. A friend of mine is organizing a villa party and there are gonna be a hell of a lot of digital nomads. I was like, I need to do this for you. I need to go there, interview some people. So let's go. All right, we got our first person that we're gonna interview and this is also the person that is hosting this party. This is Jordan Calderon. And what do you do as an entrepreneur? I run a couple of businesses. First one that I run is a digital marketing firm in the United States. We're currently ranked as a top 100 digital marketing firm. That company is called Strata. The second thing that I run is a personal brand, uh, which is a wine company. So Jordan Alexander Wine, shameless plug. <laughs> and are you able to do your job from anywhere in the world? All I need is an internet connection and my computer. How much can somebody earn that is running a company like you. The floor is maybe fifty to hundred thousand dollars if you put your all into it. The ceiling to that is pretty much uncapped. So personally, I'm making about a million dollars a year in profit. Uh, this year, we're actually going to be doing a little bit over that, which is fantastic. Really, the opportunities are endless. The earning potential is endless as well. Wow, damn, that's insane. And what made you come to Bali? My, my first time in September of 2023. I live in Los Angeles, California, and in Los Angeles, people don't really talk about Bali much. So as a result, I had no idea what I was coming into. So I thought I was just going to be relaxing on beaches for a month. I was completely wrong and I'm so happy that I was wrong. I met amazing people like Joe here. There's an amazing culture of digital nomads who are doing a lot of really incredible things and that is the reason why I am here. Interesting. And for the viewers that are watching and they might be in their starting journey of starting an online business, what would you recommend them? You know, the first one is actually quite uh, an interesting take, which is entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Some people actually mesh and perform best with a nine to five job. You need to be very, very comfortable with losing, I'm being honest. You need to be very risk seeking, understand that there's a lot of failure before you will see success and it requires a very specific type of person. So the idea is to build something that is not dependent on yourself. Try to build and scale a company, but then remove yourself. So second thing is in terms of being able to scale, to be able to remove yourself from a business. Nathan Lodka, uh, I always uh, shout them out. Uh, he has a book called How to Be a capitalist without any capital, which is fantastic to read as well. And the third thing is uh, grit, determination, and that comes from right here. All right, how did you know that you were that kind of person? I didn't, I kind of found myself uh, uh, kind of falling into this. So I went to a university in the United States called University of California, Santa Barbara, economics major. And the first day that I went into economics class, uh, the first minute, I was super excited. And the 90th minute, I was very, 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 very disappointed in what I got myself into. To. And at that point, I decided to take the reins of my own career and say, you know what? I want to build something of my own. And so I started my first company uh, that night, actually, uh, in my college dorm room. So I ended up finding myself through uh, trials and tribulations and a lot of failure, uh, you know, being and having a little bit of success at an early age uh, in entrepreneurship. Thank you for sharing. Why do most people fail, you think? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Uh, I would say that people think that by being an entrepreneur or starting your own business that you uh, have a, a right or entitlement to making money. You need to understand that you will probably be working uh, twice as much time per week or per month as your friend and be actually losing money on a monthly basis when you go and start out. So you need to be comfortable with that. Understand that there is a lot of hard work that comes with this just to make your first profitable dollar, but that hard work usually does pay off. It is quite nice. And what would your view then be on a remote job. I am such a pro. I think, you know, having uh, location flexibility and, uh, you know, if you do run your own company as well, time flexibility is one of the most important things to happiness, at least in my life, because I like to be uh, free as a bird and, and be able to hang out with my buddy right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, I think that was very, very insightful and very helpful. And if you want to reach out with him, uh, you will see his names on the screen, but also down below in the description. This is the second host that is organizing this villa party. And of course, we're also going to ask him some questions. So can you tell us who you are and what you do? I am Batman. 
<laughs> there you go. So I'm Andres the designer, AKA Andres Gonzalez, AKA The Dark Knight. Um, I design apps, I design websites. I also have a YouTube channel where I talk about designing apps and designing websites and I get paid for it, which is pretty awesome. Wow, you do a lot. How much do you, or are you able to earn as a YouTuber? Uh, so I make most of my money from YouTube on sponsorships. Right now I'm earning about 5K per month. Okay. How much do you think you would spend approximately if you would stay here for a month? I like to live luxuriously okay. and uh, overspend sometimes. But I think if I really would was trying to be smart about it, I think I could probably spend anywhere 2K to 3K per month. What made you come to Bali? Uh, meeting amazing people like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, Jordan came here last year and he was telling me all about it, telling me all the great people he met and um, yeah, how to, how to make it out here at least. And this is maybe a question more for the people that are aspiring to become a digital nomad. Like what would your advice be for them to get started? So I think the, the best thing that you can really do is double down on a particular set of high value skills and um, identify what works for you. Maybe that's freelance writing, Maybe that's um, design like me. Maybe that's maybe you're, you're in software development. So just figure out a particular skill that is remote friendly and then learn to market yourself like an absolute savage. And that's kind of how you're going to attract clients for yourself and be your own boss. And how much money you think they need to get started? You could probably do like, a, you know, 2K per month. Um, and how much do they need if they don't have any skills yet? Or like if they're still in that figuring out stage, like would you recommend them going to YouTube? Would you recommend them investing in courses? What would you recommend? Yeah. Um, so the way that I learned specifically was through trying a whole bunch of different things. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I I thought I was gonna run a Shopify store, become like some e-commerce brand. I thought I was gonna run a marketing agency. Um, I thought I was gonna be a media company and just like create a whole bunch of videos. Um, and so I tried a whole bunch of different things for like a year. Okay, wow. Um, and so I had my job at that time and then I figured out design was for me. And once I felt really confident about that, I actually quit my corporate job with only three months of savings, uh, no clients, never started a business before and was able to get some clients within a three month period. But the only reason I think that really worked and that's not what I would recommend by the way, because it's very dangerous. One is because I had faith um, and B, I had a lot of conviction that design as a skill and so it was something that I knew I can like obsess about and go really deep in. So it's actually like also focus a lot on what you're good at yeah. and then use that to your advantage. And what made you actually, I didn't know you were corporate before, but what made you want to quit corporate? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I was in an analyst role when I was looking at Excel sheets all day, working from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I think it's just waking up Sunday nights enough times and realizing I'm hating my life. And I just realized like I'm getting older, life is too short, tomorrow isn't promised. Like why am I going to spend time in a place or in a job that just kills me? Mm. You know, like time is actually your most valuable asset. What was the biggest thing you were scared of of making that switch? It's kind of weird. I wasn't scared. I think the reason I wasn't scared is because I, I did feel like God was directing me towards that path and God gave me direction throughout each step of the process. And maybe the last question, why do you think most people don't succeed in making that switch? Yeah, I think a lot of people probably get uh, lost in analysis paralysis and in the stage of tasting a whole bunch of different things. But they probably put too much pressure in the, in the short term to try to figure everything out all at once and then don't do the actual work that it takes long term to actually try everything out. Thank you. Um, was amazing. Follow and my YouTube channel. Go check his channel <laughs> down in the description. You'll find everything. Andres and I'll see you in the next one. Andres the designer. Okay. <laughs> all right. The next person. Who are you and what are you doing? My name is Lara. I'm a stem cell researcher turned marketeer. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Uh, okay. How did you get started with that? I specifically work in the biohacking space and it all comes down to my own health struggles. Didn't get the right care up until a point doctors told me cannot do anything for you anymore. I was 25 at that time. Oh. And with my science background, I was like, let's figure this out myself. I used biohacking, right science for me to reverse everything. And that's when I was like, I want to use this degree for the better. Wow. That's hella cool. And you can do this from anywhere in the world? I can do this from anywhere in the world. Yes. That was my goal, by the way. I wanted to become a digital nomad. That was my number one goal. Okay. So that's amazing. And how much can somebody like you earn? Well, I have an agency. So I started as a freelancer I'd say I think I was maxing around five thousand dollars a month when I was freelance but then I was like you know full-time working mm. and right now the sky's the limit the bigger the agency the more you can you can earn amazing and how much do you feel like this you've been living here for a while right yes for two years now okay so how much would you spend approximately on a month then I'd say well since the two years that I'm here in Bali the prices have shifted quite a bit for mm. for rent in the beginning I had like two hundred dollars uh, guest house which was very very cheap 
cheap. Um, that same guest house went up to 1,000 two months after. And now I think that same guest house is at $700. That's insane. That's a that's a yeah. big leap. And you said like when you graduated, you wanted to become a digital nomad. Why was that? I was inspired by people online, mainly on Instagram. I don't know if you know Jake and Marie. Okay, they're very big uh, travel influencers. And um, yeah, they inspired me to, you know, work from anywhere. First, I thought, let's become an influencer. Mm. And then I was like, oh, this is a lot of work, you know, <laughs> to like put out content. I was not super comfortable in front of the camera. And I was like, no, this is not for me. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe just using my uh, my education with my passion, which was then biohacking and something that I'm really good at could then make my job. I used the concept Ikigai. Do you know the Japanese mm, concept? Yes. Right. Maybe you teach this already. <laughs> yeah, but tell them, tell them. <laughs> okay. So what I used was like the intersection of, okay, what are you passionate about? Mm. What are you really good at? And what does the world need? The intersection of all of that. And then I just started trying things. So that would be my biggest tip because in two years in my PhD, I knew I wanted to leave Belgium. I wanted to become a digital nomad. I still had two years to go. So I was like, okay, I have these two years in front of me. I'm just going to try things. And I started to grow my network online via LinkedIn. I started already connecting with some remote first or remote only companies. Um, spontaneously apply. Really know the company inside out saying like, okay, this is what I did. I went to this um, different companies and I connected with the CEO and I said, well, this is what your company is missing right now. This is um, what you should be doing. This is how I can help. And this is why you should create this position for me. Wow. And 10 out of 30 wanted to hire me. That's a golden tip right there. That's a golden tip. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and then in the end, I actually got a call with someone who then became my mentor and he saw some, I guess, something entrepreneurial or recognized something. And he was like, you have to start your own thing. And that's why, that's why I started my own thing. That's inspiring. <laughs> why do you think most people don't take the leap or don't succeed in this journey? I think mindset. I'm, I'm a little bit fortunate, I would say, like from a kid, my mom always whispered in my ear, you can do anything as long as you set your mind to it. So I don't doubt myself as easily. So just know that you have gifts to give and don't doubt that. I think that is fantastic. So where can people find you? How can people connect with you? My name is Lara Hemerick, well, PhD. Also, like put it yeah. here and like, put it down below. And yeah, because it's a pretty tricky, uh, <laughs> tricky name. Yeah. yeah, you can follow me there. This oh is. Oh my God! What is that? <laughs> it's a. It's, what? it's a DJI pocket. Ridiculously cool, right? Monitor. What is this? A, a screen for ants? Well, All right. Who are you, and what do you do? Okay, my name is Thomas, uh, and I live in Bali and run a real estate marketing agency. Cool. Why did you choose Bali, and how long have you been here? I've been here for seven years. What? Yeah, and why did I choose Bali? It's many reasons. Initially, I think I chose it because it was very affordable. That's changed because it's not as affordable now, but also that's not really a primary reason for me any longer. It's just a convenient place to live. Yeah, it's, it's the, the food is good. There's good co-working spaces, you meet good people, lots of reasons. Interesting. And how would you say cost of living changed? Because you've seen it seven years ago and you yeah. see how it, is, how it is now. How much yeah. do you yeah. think you, you spent seven years ago and how much you're spending now every month? Yeah. Like the, the, the crazy, crazy thing about Bali specifically, but probably all of Southeast Asia, is there's a huge diversity in uh, in people's budget. I mean, you, oh. could, you could live here for $500 a month. Oh. You, probably, you probably could. Yeah, yeah. It really, yeah, it really does depend. I mean, you can go out and have a hundred and fifty dollar dinner, or you can have a dollar fifty dinner, right? So like, and it's kind of nice to mix that up and, and do both. What made you want to become to be able to work online? Like, what was that decision like? Like, did you work for a normal job before? Or? So I graduated university with a degree in political science and economics, oh, wow. and I did do like an internship um, at uh, like a research institute for I think it was like a, like three months. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Asia for a couple months. So I was going to do Vietnam, Thailand, Bali, and a couple other places, and then just love Bali, like just love Bali. And I was like, shoot, I really want to, I, you know, like I stretched the budget a little bit for this like three month trip. I was like, I'm going to stay another couple months. And then I met a lot of people who are living here. Like I'm my Airbnb host at the time. I remember I, I was seeing an Airbnb. I think it was literally like $12 a night, what? like in a villa, like a nice, like a what? nice like room. Why do you think most people don't really succeed in that journey of working online and making this happen? I mean, I do think it's not for everyone. Mm. I do think that being a business owner is not for everyone. Starting your own business is not for everyone and I think going from zero to something is really 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 difficult once you do that once you have made your first five thousand dollars it's it's it and you've tested something something's working you can go from five thousand 
to 50,000, probably easier than you go from zero to 5,000, honestly, because it's, it's really the initial, like finding something that, you know, you have to set up a website, you have to invest a lot of time up front. You have to have a, a, a delayed gratification. Um, like, I think that like, even for me, it is very hard to stay motivated. Mm. Motivation is very tricky. Mm. And there is kind of two different thing motivating factors. Like either your back's against the wall and you've got to make it work no matter what. Yeah. Or you are sort of have like an optimistic outlook of like, oh, I'm really excited about making, you know, like you're comfortable. Like, like sometimes if you're financially stressed and your back's against the wall, people are not productive in that environment. But, but, you know, with some guidance, I think definitely can help. Yeah. All right. Thank you, my man. All right, the next person is Cash Cow Casper. Okay, Cash Cow Casper, um, what do you do? So I run uh, faceless YouTube channels. Mm. I've been doing this for three, three and a half years now. And uh, so I run these channels myself and I also have a coaching consulting company where I help nine to fivers start and scale their own faceless YouTube channels so that they can potentially earn enough to have less worry about money, bills, and potentially can travel more and just do uh, what they want and live life on their own terms. Super cool. How much can somebody earn like with a, a faceless YouTube channel? So from my client's results, what I see on average is that within three to six months, it is very possible to be earning three, four, or even 5K from ad revenue alone. Beautiful. Yeah. And what made you come to Bali? Bali captured my heart when I was like 12 years old already. I came here for the first time on a family holiday and I surfed here for the first time in Uluwatu and uh, I immediately fell in love. And then I sort of after that set my goal that I wanted to be able to live a life where I am my own boss and can travel the world and just be flexible with my hours. When I was like in high school and studying, I always had this mindset of, okay, I have to learn how to make money online. And um, right after I finished my university degree, I was running a pretty successful dropshipping store and that was making me uh, more than enough to move to Bali and live here and uh, do my own thing. Okay. Yeah, interesting. And how much do you spend on average like living here in Bali? 1.7 to 2,000 euros a month, everything included. So like visa, house, scooter, food, sports, dinners with friends. Mm. I think uh, somewhere a bit between that, yeah. And I'm a pretty conservative man, I would say. I don't excessively spend or go on very expensive dinners. How much do you think you would spend in the Netherlands if you would live the same lifestyle? It would of course be a lot more expensive because there's crazy inflation, right? But I think if you like, like here we eat out a lot, but that is almost like just having dinner at home in a way where we usually eat with friends and it's very normal and sometimes it's cheaper. But if you do like groceries in the Netherlands, it's maybe the same price as eating out here. Right, so yeah. What would you advise to somebody that is listening now and is like, hey, I would love to become a digital nomad. What would you advise them? Mm -hmm. I think the most important part is to, uh, first of all, work on your mindset and understand what you want out of life, how much money you need for that, and what it would take to live a life like this, if that is what you want. Second, you need to learn a skill. So the, the best thing I think you can do is learn something that doesn't cost you money. So I think it's better to do something, for example, like sales, mm -hmm. where you put in your time and you get rewarded with money for that time, but you don't have to spend money on it. But if you do have money to invest, you can try these higher risk business models. But I think for most people, it's probably safer to build up a skill next to their job. And once they have enough savings and money and earnings from that skill, then they can like quit that job and go travel and do, do things. Yeah. All right. And why do you think most people fail? Maybe because you're a coach consultant, like you have worked with people. Why do you yeah. think most people do not succeed in starting a random online business or yeah. their online journey to live a digital nomad lifestyle? The biggest reason people fail is because they're in Bali and they're like, oh, I want that too. And I am down to work for that and give everything up and do that. But once it actually comes to the work, mm. one week, two weeks, two months, they quit mm. or they don't do it or they try something else mm. and they don't put enough time in the skill to learn the skill to actually make money from it mm. and yeah they just get distracted a lot of people don't realize how much you have to give up when you're starting to make this into a reality thank you what do you think about 
getting a remote job? Um, I never had a remote job. I, uh, I always worked for myself, so that's a little hard maybe for me to mm -hmm. answer, but maybe more freelancing yeah, stuff. Yeah. So the people that do work on U European times with a remote job or whatever, they have to work like midday to evenings here mm -hmm. because yeah. they work on that time zone. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's you can do it for a while. I wouldn't do that just because then you have to live up to another schedule where you live here, but you still have to work on weird hours. And I would not be happy having to work every afternoon and evening till late. Yeah. And every day, like. Wait, where can people find you? So, um, YouTube, Casper Vendery, Instagram, Casper VDR. I have, uh, yeah, <laughs> click here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you so much. All right, the next is Steph. And what do you do? I'm a mindset mentor. Oh, wow, cool. And how long have you been in Bali? Three months now. Yeah. Oh. So is this uh, new, this digital nomad life for you? It's fairly new. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. And as a mindset mentor, like how much could you make as a mindset mentor? Oh, bro, sky's the limit. Like, oh. obviously it depends on how much you think you're worth, right? But I would say you should make a minimum easily of like, I'd say 70, 80K a year, yeah. you know? That's what you should be aiming for as a minimum. And mm. I'm aiming at a minimum of 100, 120K per year. Yeah. That's kind of the goal, yeah. All right, perfect. And how much do you think you spend here in Bali, like cost of living per month? If you go out eating regularly and you just live in a very nice place, depending where you live, of course, right? I mean, most of the people live in Canggu. <laughs> I, live in, I live in Ubud, so it's a little bit cheaper for sure. But I would say, yeah, count on two grand USD, mm -hmm. two and a half maybe, something like that. Yeah. And what made you want to become a digital nomad? Um, freedom, bro. Like, just the freedom to go wherever I want to be. Like, I don't want to be stuck in one place. I just want to be able to go out and about wherever I want to be, you know, doing my thing and having the flexibility of not being stuck somewhere because I need to make money somewhere and work a job. No, I just want to be traveling the world, going out and around, uh, doing the thing that I love. Yeah, interesting. And when did you know that you wanted to do this? Because did you have a normal job before or? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been in real estate in Belgium. Uh, I quit that job two and a half years ago. So obviously you can't go anywhere if you're in real estate. Like mm -hmm. you just, oh, yeah. you just yeah. have to be there, right? But yeah, I've always had this urge to like go out and go mm -hmm. travel and explore the world. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing in Belgium? You know, like this country is too small. So yeah, it's been there for a long while, but it's only been this, this year. So 2024, beginning of this year, where I felt like, okay, I really need to go for this and just mm -hmm. make the jump, like not wait, stop waiting, just just pack your backpack and leave and let's figure it out from there yeah interesting and what would you advise to somebody that is thinking about becoming a digital nomad I would really ask myself like mm -hmm. like what is it that you really want not coming from your ego or whatever it is like no from your heart what is it that you really want it's not just that you also have to get your shit together right sure. you also have to know what you're doing you have to have a have the business and you have to kind of know what are my plans gonna be for the next couple of months and years and whatever so mm -hmm. it's not just jumping in it completely blind like no like know what you want because if you're just doing it because it looks nice from the outside because everybody's doing it then don't come here don't do that because you're gonna get smashed in the face you know <laughs> life is gonna teach you a lesson you don't even need to know this is the most important part you don't need to know how if you really know like this is what i want i want to go for this okay perfect focus on the end goal focus with the end goal in mind mm -hmm and the how will reveal itself if you take the courageous steps and if you jump into the fears of like what's holding you back at the moment right mm -hmm. yeah okay. do you also think that's the reason maybe why uh, most people fail because sometimes we see people they come here and then eventually it doesn't work out one maybe because they're not really committed mm -hmm. and as soon as things get tough they're like mm -hmm. oh fuck yeah this is maybe not for me i'm just gonna go back home back into safety and yeah. do all these things but it takes courage to do mm -hmm. these things i'm just starting out I'm just taking a huge risk and a huge leap of faith, right? But mm -hmm. that's because I believe in myself. Yeah. I've had multiple moments where I thought like, oh shit, I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna go back home, but that's not what I want. Yeah. Because I, I, I can guess that a lot of people that are watching right now are on the fence like, hey, I wanna become a digital nomad. Hey, I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. Mm. And, and everybody's advice is a little bit different than that, right? But you would say like, just take the plunge. Of course, maybe have some savings. I don't know how much savings like do you think they ha should have before they leave? Yeah, of course. Like I would say to be a little bit safe, like make sure that you mm. can at least survive for like three to six months. Okay. So like if you have enough savings to survive for three to six months, like what the fuck's holding you back? You need to have a bit of a plan. Yeah. 
to like know what, okay, what is it I'm actually going to spend my time on here doing, right? You're a very interesting profile, you know, like yeah. most people are like, have a different view, but like you just recently took that leap. So it's like nice to have that fresh energy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where you are still there. A lot of people ask me to get a remote job, you know, like for them, they think that's the fastest way to like live this lifestyle by having a job that would hire remotely. Like, do you have any opinions on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, it depends if you're already an entrepreneur or starting your own business and you're still doubting if you want to go abroad, then I would just kind of say like, take the leap of faith because probably it's the thing that you really want to do. One, it's not the only way. There's a lot of different ways. Like, you don't know how you can make life happen for yeah. you, right? Yeah. But if you feel like that's the way you want to take, okay, why not? Don't just do it because you're going to be able to travel. No, do it because you actually want to do it. Mm. Right. right. I think that's amazing advice. Thank you so much. Thank you, man.